My wife Celia and I had an adopted daughter called Boti, Boti Goodwin, and she was very brilliant and amazing and much loved. And when she was 28, she died quite suddenly when she was a student in America. And this is a poem I wrote about her funeral, but, it, but before that I'll read you four lines about how we heard of her death. Telephone told me that you were dead. Now I hate every telephone's stupid head. I'd rather sit here turning to a block of stone than pick up any snake of a telephone. And this is a poem I wrote after Boti's funeral, which took place in a snowstorm in Surrey. And there's a person called Caitlin in this poem, who is my who is our granddaughter and who loved Boti. Especially when it snows and every tree has its dark arms and widespread hands full of that shining angel food. Especially when it snows and every footprint makes a dark lake among the frozen grass. Especially when it snows, darling, and tough little robins beg for crumbs at golden spangled windows. Ever since we said goodbye to you in that memorial garden where nothing grew except the beautiful blank-eyed snow, and little Caitlin crouched to wave goodbye to you down in the shadows. Especially when it snows and keeps on snowing. Especially when it snows and down the purple pathways of the sky the planet staggers like King Lear with his dead darling in his arms especially when it snows and keeps on snowing. Death is smaller than I thought. My mother and father died some years ago. I loved them very much. When they died, my love for them did not vanish or fade away. It stayed just about the same, only a sadder colour. And I can feel their love for me, same as it ever was. Nowadays, in good times or bad, I sometimes ask my mother and father to walk beside me or to sit with me so we can talk together or be silent. They always come to me. I talk to them and listen to them. And I think I hear them talk to me. It's very simple. Nothing to do with spiritualism or religion or mumbo jumbo. It is imaginary. It is real. It is love.